As the outer covering of our body, skin is exposed to many types of environmental factors, such as physical abrasions, chemical irritants, and significant fluctuations in temperature. Our skin's primary function is to protect underlying tissues from exposure to such factors. Another factor, namely sunlight, can have both beneficial effects and detrimental effects on our health because of its influence on skin. In this section, we briefly consider one example of how interaction between sunlight and skin cells can benefit our health, and one example of how interactions between sunlight and skin cells can be detrimental to our health. Let's look at these now. First, let's consider one of the beneficial effects of limited exposure to sunlight on our health. When exposed to UV radiation, epidermal cells in the stratum spinosum and stratum basale convert a cholesterol-related steroid called provitamin D3, or 7-dehydrocholesterol, into pre-vitamin D3. This chemical quickly isomerizes into vitamin D3, or cholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol is transported via blood vessels to the liver. There, enzymes convert vitamin D3 into calcifidiol, or calcidiol, which is 25-hydroxycholecalciferol. From the liver, calcidiol is filtered from blood by the kidneys. Cells of the proximal tube of the nephrons of the kidney metabolize it into calcitriol, which is the active form of vitamin D3, also known as 1,25-dihydroxycholecalciferol. Thus, from initial exposure of skin cells to sunlight, through a series of chemical reactions, ultimately, an active form of vitamin D3 is released into circulation from the kidneys. Calcitriol is essential for the absorption of calcium and phosphorus in the small intestine. Several disorders related to inadequate supplies of calcium and phosphorus can lead to problems in any body tissue or organ or system that depends on these minerals. Calcium and phosphorus are critical, for example, for proper skeletal development. Therefore, an inadequate supply of vitamin D3 can lead to abnormally weak and flexible bones. Osteomalacia is a disease characterized by the softening of the bones caused by impaired bone metabolism primarily due to inadequate levels of available phosphate, calcium, and vitamin D. The impairment of bone metabolism causes inadequate bone mineralization. Osteomalacia in children is known as rickets. And because of this use of the term osteomalacia, is often restricted to the milder, adult form of the disease. We'll explore the role of vitamin D3 in skeletal development and these aforementioned disorders in Module 6 on osseous tissue. While limited exposure to sunlight can be beneficial, too much sunlight can damage epithelial cells and deeper tissues. For example, skin exposure to sunlight can lead to skin cancers. In Module 4.9, we describe cancer as a loss of control of cell division due to mutations in DNA. The UV radiation of sunlight can provide the necessary energy to cause structural and chemical changes in DNA. Given that our skin is directly exposed to sunlight, the DNA of our skin is particularly at risk to such mutations. Tumors of the skin may be benign or malignant. A benign tumor is a mass of cells that lacks the ability to either invade neighboring tissues or metastasize, that is to spread throughout the body. Whereas malignant tumors can spread and we call such tumors cancerous. Almost everyone has several benign tumors of the skin. Moles and warts are common examples. Skin cancers, however, are more dangerous, and skin cancers are the most common form of cancer. Any cancer of epithelial tissue is called a carcinoma. The most common skin cancer is basal cell carcinoma, which often looks like a waxy bump. Tying together our discussion from Module 5.1, the names of the various skin cancers will become easier to understand. Basal cell carcinoma originates in the stratum basale. Less common are squamous cell carcinomas, which involve more superficial layers of epidermal cells. Metastasis seldom occurs in either of these cancers, and most people survive them. The usual treatment involves surgical removal of the tumor. Compared with these common and seldom life-threatening cancers, malignant melanomas are extremely dangerous. In this condition, cancerous melanocytes grow rapidly and metastasize through the lymphatic system. A melanoma usually begins from a mole, but may appear anywhere in the body. The outlook for long-term survival depends on when the condition is detected and treated. 
Avoiding exposure to UV radiation in sunlight, especially during the middle of the day, and using a sunblock, not a tanning oil, would largely prevent all three forms of these cancers. Other more rare forms of skin cancer include cancers formed in Merkel cells, which are tactile epithelial cells that act as mechanoreceptors essential for light touch sensation. In summary, limited exposure to UV radiation from the sun causes precursors to vitamin D3 to form in the skin. Vitamin D3 plays an important role that influences calcium and phosphorus absorption in the small intestines. Calcium and phosphorus are essential in skeletal development and many other physiological processes. UV radiation can be harmful as the energy from sunlight can cause changes in the DNA of skin cells leading to the development of cancer. Join me in Module 5.4 as we examine the deepest component of skin, namely the dermis, and learn more about its structure and function.